We have pretty good action sequences, a decent amount of blood. This movie is not that bad. Hello everyone, my name is Max Aaron James. Welcome back and welcome if you are new to this channel. This here is a review of the movie The Crow, 2024 is The Crow, written by James Obar and Zach Balin, directed by Rupert Sanders. This is a film adaptation of the comic book of the same name that I do not know how popular it was prior to the 1994 The Crow with Brandon Lee, but of course it built a big following, almost a cult following, following that movie. We got about three sequels that did not get as good uh, acclaim or... Uh, good reception from the audiences and they're seeing this pretty bad and pretty clumsy almost to the point that You pretend that they don't exist. I would say that these movies kind of veer away from the identity or the core the soul that makes the crow the crow which is primarily love and vengeance and leaning into the idea of justice, which is not always a bad thing, but it's important to have the right people who are capable of telling these stories and the issue is the people that were involved in the creation of these movies were not capable. So 2024 The Crow is about Eric played by Bill Skarsgård who is on the rampage for revenge after he and his lover are murdered. He comes back to life willing to give up his soul to avenge the death of the woman he loves played by FKA Twigs. She plays Shelly and also even willing to bring her back to life, give up his soul to bring her back to life. This movie tries to avoid, or it does avoid, doing what many revenge films do, where often our protagonist, predominantly a male, a white male specifically, has flashbacks with bright lighting of their lover who is already passed or dead or killed earlier on in the movie. Here we have a lot more character development with Shelley as she and Eric build a romance and it blooms or blossoms and I would have much preferred that they were already in a relationship. Reason being that so much time is spent in developing their love for one another that it takes away or sacrifices so much of the time or wastes so much of the time that we could be having in the actual story of getting revenge and all that. But this is a love story just as much as it is a revenge story. So I guess I can't be too upset. Actually, I can because it does waste time and it kind of drags along a bit too much. And as I was watching the movie, I saw that I, I recognized that I appreciated how much that they were developing these characters together. But then also in the back of my mind, I understood this movie is under two hours and we're going through almost 30 minutes and nothing major has happened yet. Maybe it would have been better if these two were already lovers or there was a montage of them meeting, a well-deserved, well well executed montage of their blossoming love and saved us about 15 minutes. We also have an antagonist who is kind of de demonic or has supernatural elements made to deal with the devil. I do not know if that was necessarily needed, but I get it. I'm fine with it, whatever. I was a bit thrown off by some of the comedic elements or comedic choices that never really landed. The in-between was not necessary for us, but again, that was there. I think in a way for exposition, especially with the guide that was living in the in-between. I was thrown off by some of the green screen and the CGI blood. Why do we have CGI blood? I can really appreciate gore and I like blood, especially in movies like this, action movies that feel it makes sense to have this much blood, but don't waste it. Don't waste these moments with CGI. We get too many moments that feel they were placed there just to get rid of characters or to get some of our characters from one place to the next. This movie has cool action sequences. I like the choreography. Again, I like the blood. I like the fight scenes. I like the costume design. I think Bill Skarsgård looks good as the crow, even though some of the tattoos are questionable. But it's the moments of CGI blood, bad green screen, of just exposition that was not necessary. And I feel that when I talk about exposition in my videos, it comes off as I don't want exposition. Exposition is not entirely bad. It's the use of exposition. I think overall, this is a cool movie and I feel a lot of people will enjoy it as long as you don't compare it to 1994's The Crow. And I think it is not fair to compare any movie to a previous film, even if this one is better or an improvement of the previous film. There is something about this movie that does not connect with me. And the movie is not all bad. It's just not all there. What I do appreciate is its moodiness and angst and almost emo or goth feel that it was able to maintain. I like how gloomy it was and how dark they were able to keep it. I feel there were elements here that they were not recognizing were very strong 
and could have added to the story, but they kind of just presented it in passing or moments that could have built into something greater. Anyway, that is my review. Until next time, y'all take care of each other. Check up on one another. Make sure you check up on yourself. And remember, potential has no limit.